The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Torture is my subject this time around. Oh, don't be alarmed. I have no intention of shocking you with unmentionable horrors. For you see, there are all sorts of torments invented by man to bedevil his fellow man. And perhaps the most subtle of these is man's fear of the unknown. We are so constructed, it seems to me, that we can almost always cope with the known whatever it may be. But when we don't know what lies ahead, what nameless nightmare may await, well, uh, let's illustrate with Todd Stearns and his wife, Tammy. Todd, what if you told them what they want to know? It could mean the end of this country, Tammy. It could mean the end of the world. The world? The world. Mr. X mentioned torture, didn't he? Yes. Will you be able to stand it? I think so. Once I know what it is. But Mr. X is clever. He won't tell me. He knows that not knowing, that's the worst torture of all. Our mystery drama, The Pit and the Pendulum, was especially adapted from the Edgar Allan Poe classic for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Tony Roberts and Marion Seldes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It's nothing new to say that men, and women too, have successfully endured the worst of physical pain one can imagine. But mental pain, I'm told, is something else again. Those skilled in the art of extracting information well know that physical force will often succeed. But that mental force will always succeed. Why not employ it at once then? Because it requires great skill, exquisite subtlety, and is, in consequence, far more difficult to use. Be all this as it may, such thoughts held little, if any, interest for Todd and Tammy Stearns as they drove in an official government limousine toward the airport of a large city. You really shouldn't have come to see me off this time, Tammy. Break my record? I've gone to the airport with you every time you've made one of your mysterious, deep, dark, secret trips. Ever since we were married four years ago. Yeah, but with Jill down with a cold... Well, Anna could certainly take care of her for an hour or two. Todd. Yes? You're going to be all right, aren't you? <laughs> what makes you ask a silly question like that? It isn't silly, and you know it. These trips you make abroad every now and then... Well, I don't know what they're all about. I've never known. Because I've never told you, and I never will. The less you know, the better off you'll be. Well, I'm not asking you to tell me. I know you won't. But it's... It's not knowing that makes me bite my nails till you come safely back home. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but I... That's funny. What? I don't think we're... We're not. Driver? Driver, why did you take the left turn? You're heading away from the airport, not toward it. Good heavens, Todd, we are at that. Driver! Driver, answer me. Why? Todd, look. The glass panel's sliding up. What the devil is this? Driver, what in blazes is going on? He's just not paying attention. He's not even turning around. I don't understand this. Driver! Damn it! He's hoping for a red light, Todd. Let's get out. And fast. Locked. Both doors are locked, and I can't open them. Todd. Todd. 
God. What does this mean? I don't like to think what it means, Tammy. But I sure wish you hadn't come along this time. Come in, Mr. Stearns. Come in. Uh, sit down, Mr. Stearns. Make yourself comfortable. What have you done with my wife? Oh, she's safe and comfortable. There's nothing for you to worry about, I assure you. Uh, would you care for a drink? As a matter of fact, I could use one. If it isn't drugged. Drugged? That's a fanciful idea. <laughs> it's no more fanciful than kidnapping me. Who are you? What's this all about? As to who I am, you can call me Mr. X. Oh, Mr. X. Come on, you can't be for real. How corny can you get? It's corny, I admit, but it's also safer. Infinitely safer than any name I might use. You see, X is an unknown quantity. As for what this is all about... Well, oh, your drink. Thanks. What is this all about? Oh, come now, Mr. Stearns. Todd, if I may. You know what it's about. I'm afraid not. You're lying, of course, but... Well, no sense wasting valuable time fencing with each other, so I'll tell you. I represent a group that's in the business of selling top-secret information of one country to another. You're in the business of conveying top-secret information from this country to another. The reason you were kidnapped and brought here was because we want the top secret you were presently on your way to deliver to... <laughs> well, you know where. <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking now, about. Now, let's not fence, please. I know that you were on your way abroad with the formula for a new bacterial gas, which would easily tip the balance of power in favor of the country possessing it. Oh, and my government is willing to uh, hand over a weapon as vital and deadly as this to another government? It is, and you know why. The pact between the two governments to keep each other informed and thus hopefully to maintain the balance of power. <laughs> you know, you've been seeing too many James Bond movies. Now stop it, Todd. I... I... I want the formula, and I mean to have it. Well, you won't get it from me because I haven't got it. As I guess you know, your muscle men searched me thoroughly and found nothing. I didn't expect they would. I'd have been very surprised, indeed shocked, if you'd been carrying such a formula worth untold millions on your person instead of in your head. In my head? Precisely. Todd, I'm authorized to offer you $50,000 for the formula. For a formula you've just told me can be sold for untold millions? Oh, all right. How much do you want? It's an academic question, Mr. X, since I don't have the formula. Hmm. Would you consider a hundred thousand? I haven't got the formula you're talking about. This is a tape recorder. I'm going to leave you here alone for 15 minutes. When I return, I hope you will have been sensible enough to record the formula for me. Look, I assure Help you... Help yourself to the liquor. And, of course, you won't try to escape. As you see, there are no windows and only one door. I... And please, please, no more nonsense about your not having the formula. You have it, Todd. You have it as surely as we have your wife. Ah, Mrs. Stearns, I see you've been made comfortable. What have you done with my husband? Where is now, he? Now, now, there's no need to distress yourself, Mrs. Stearns. Tammy, if I may. Uh, Todd is presently as safe and as comfortable as you are. Oh, I see that you're drinking tea. Would you like another cup? What is all this? Why were we brought here? Please. Now, calm explain. yourself, I beg you. You're in no danger. My husband? Nor is he. He's perfectly safe and unharmed at the moment. At the moment? What do you mean by that? Well, nothing more nor less than what I said. Uh, uh, tell me, how much do you know about Todd's affairs? His affairs? His work, his career, the duties he performs for our government. Nothing. Except he's an undersecretary. Well, in, in, in some department or other. I don't even know that. That seems rather hard to believe. Married four years and you don't even know what department he works for? No. You never bothered to ask? Well, yes. And? Todd made plain to me he wouldn't tell me and that I was not to ask. You love Todd, of course. Of course. How much do you love him? I, I love him. I can't say more than that. Well, I think you can. I think you can say a good deal more than that. For instance, do you love him enough to suffer pain for him, a great deal of pain? What kind of question is that? Well, just answer it. Well? I can't answer it. How would I know how much pain I could stand until I was standing it? 
Hmm. Yeah, you have a point. Be interesting, though, wouldn't it, to find out how much you do love Todd, how much pain you could endure. I... I don't know why you're threatening me. Threatening you, Tammy? No, no, not at all. Our discussion is purely theoretical, at least at this time. At least at this time. For the present. Why, well, you're threatening me even now. You're you're torturing at me by by hinting at I I don't know what. Well, let's hope there'll be no need for you to find out. Uh, come in now, Miss C. Thank you. Uh, stay here with her. You know what to do with her if I send the signal. Do what? What are you going to do to me if he sends a signal? Well, answer me. Please. Please answer me. What? The tape is blank, Todd. You recorded nothing. There's nothing to record. Nothing. If there is a formula such as you speak of, I've never heard of it. Now, why don't you just knock off this nonsense and let me and my wife get out of here? Simply because there is a formula and you carry it in your head and you are going to dictate it into this machine before I'm through with you. And your wife. Tammy has nothing to do with this. Hasn't she? She has only the vaguest idea of what I do at the department, if she has any idea at all. Even if I had memorized a formula, which I haven't, I'd never have told her about it. And why not? Why not? Because your work is precisely what I say it is. Top secret, high security. Uh, no. Then why wouldn't you tell her? You love her, don't you? Of course. Then surely you trust her. Certainly I trust her. But not enough to let her know what you do? Oh, you underrate her, Todd. You really do. That woman would do anything for you. Suffer untold pain for you. What do you mean by that? Suffer untold pain for me. Well, nothing really. She told me she would, that's all. Oh, what amounted to the same thing. It just, just happened to come up in our talk together. When did you talk? Only a few moments ago. I went to see her when I left you. I had a very nice chat with her, a very interesting and informative chat. About how much pain she could stand? Well, that was only a small part of what we talked about. Now, listen to me. She knows nothing. Of course she doesn't. How could she? There's nothing to know, you say. You harm her. And I warn you, Mr. X, or whatever you are, I warn Todd, you... Todd, stop acting like a fool. Now, you know that you're helpless, and so is she. You also know that in one way or another, you're going to give me that formula, so... Why not give it to me and save us all a lot of trouble, all three of us? Three of us. You, me, and Tammy. Now, here's the tape recorder. Begin. Very well. Come along with me, Todd. Where to? The cellar. There's something there I want to show you. Something I'm sure will change your mind. Tell me what you see. It's a room. Not a very big room. With aluminum walls. They look like aluminum anyway. What else? There's a hole. Big wide hole on the floor. What else? Nothing that I can see. Look up. <sighs> what do you see now? Hang hanging. From the ceiling. It's about a foot from the ceiling. A, uh... Of what, Todd? Looks, uh, like a... Headsman's axe. An oversized headman's axe. With a very sharp cutting edge. Razor sharp. Note how the light gleams off it. And now there's something more for you to see. Tammy. No. You stay here. She stays there. On the other side of the room. Tammy, are you all right? Yes, darling. Are you... Sure. Sure. Now, Todd, two questions. Have you ever heard of a torture called the pendulum? Yes, and another called the pit. Is that... 
The hole in the floor. A wide hole. The pit, yes. You have heard of it. Uh, you're not going to be sick, are you? No. Todd, don't make me subject you to the pendulum. Especially don't make me subject you to the exquisite torment of the pit. Above all, don't make me subject Tammy to either. No, not Tammy. You... That depends on you. Now, the formula, Todd. Will you give it to me? Or will you not? If you were Todd Stearns, what would you do? Come, if you have the imagination I think you have, you are Todd Stearns or Tammy Stearns. What would be your answer? What would you do? Think about it until I return for Act Two. In a room, a rather curious room, in the basement of an isolated country house, Todd and Tammy Stearns face a torture known as the pit and the pendulum. Face it, but need not undergo it if Todd will tell Mr. X what he wants to know. Reveal the formula he carries in his head for a new weapon of destruction, a bacterial gas. As Todd gazes across the yawning pit at his lovely wife on the other side, Mr. X repeats. Once again, Todd, I know it's a difficult decision, but it is one that you must make. Will you give me the formula or not? I, I told you I don't have now, that's it. That's enough. You have the formula. You, you memorized it. I, I know that. So no more time-wasting nonsense. Which is it to be? Will you give me the formula without forcing me to torture it out of you, or must I use force? I, I have nothing to tell you. Perhaps if I explain how the pendulum works. No need for that. I know. But does Tammy know? Do you, Tammy? No. Tammy, look up toward the ceiling. That is a blade, you see, a, a blade shaped like a big headsman's axe, and it's razor sharp. Don't listen to him, Tammy. He's trying to frighten you. Exactly what I'm trying to do, Tammy, for reasons that are quite obvious, I should think. Wouldn't you? Yes. Now, that large razor sharp blade, Tammy, is attached to a pendulum. A pendulum that swings back and forth and gets an inch lower on each swing. An inch lower on each swing? Swing? Yes. And so anyone strapped to that slab on the floor... Look, look down now, Tammy, to the floor. You see the slab with the straps? Yes. Anyone strapped to that slab will, in time, be cut in half. Tammy, don't listen. Slowly. Cut in half slowly, Tammy. You wouldn't. But you, you, you wouldn't, you please. You can't. You won't kill him. Todd? Oh, gracious, no. He has what I want. I can't kill him unless we reach that perfectly wasteful moment when I have no option but to end this whole scene in death. No, no. No thought of killing him. You. Oh, my God. Tammy, did you hear me? I heard you. Then, my dear, would you try to do what I have failed to do? Convince your husband to give me the formula. The Tammy. How can I convince him if you couldn't? Todd, have you no imagination whatever? Do you really think that you'll be able to watch Tammy kill before your eyes without breaking? No answer. Your silence could signify several possibilities. One, you're too shocked at the prospect to answer. Two, you could watch while your wife is slowly cut in half in agony, Todd. Three, you couldn't. Now, which, Todd? Possibly even you don't know at this moment. Hmm. Well, all right, I'll give you time to think it over, to talk it over, both of you. Uh, Miss Z, uh, you know where to take Mrs. Stearns. Mr. Stearns and I will join you there shortly. Todd, I love you. And I love you, Tammy. I love you. You love her. We'll see how much very soon now. Uh, very soon.
Tammy. A glass of champagne. No. It would sicken me. Me too. It just isn't a dinner they've spread before us. It's a gourmet's dream. Or the condemned's last meal. Yeah. Darling, we... We've got to talk this out. What is there to talk out? You've told me that the secret, the, the formula that you memorized, if it got into the wrong hands, it could mean the death of millions. And if you give it to Mr. X, it will certainly be in the wrong hands. I, I don't know. Well, what do you mean? The group he represents, they'd sell the formula to the highest bidder. They wouldn't care who, just so that they got their millions. Well, maybe for once, just for once, I got to think of us, not the world. But we are the world. I know that, too. You're involved now. This character X could torture me to death, and... Well, I don't think I'd break. I don't think I would, but... You can't tell till you're going through it. I've known agents who... Well, never mind. To face torture myself alone, that's one thing. But to watch you face it... Tammy, I couldn't bear that. Why are you looking at me like that? You're going to have to bear it, Todd. You can't risk the lives of millions for, for one person, no matter how much you love her. But that's the point I wanted to make. If I give X the form... Todd, you're not going to. It doesn't mean that whoever buys it will use it to control the world. It could simply mean they would have a balance of power with us. Instead of the government, whichever it is, you won't tell me, that already has a pact with us? Sweetheart, I am just a courier. I'm not up there with the brass. A pact? Well, it's supposed to mean what you think it means, but... Well, sometimes... I don't know. Sometimes I think all it means is that both countries have the same amount of clout and can't rip each other off. How did we get into this? Because this is what it's all about. No. What it's all about is you. You getting tortured is what it's about. Tammy... X is going to make me watch you on that slab as the pendulum comes closer, inch by inch. Darling, I won't be able to bear it. I think you will. I know you will. You're a lot surer than I am. Oh, dear, what a pity. The champagne, the food, you touched nothing. Who is he? Uh, oh, a little quirk of mine. He fits in, don't you think? The black suit, the red hood with slits for eyes. Just right for an executioner. Just right to scare the daylights out of your victims. Exactly. Tammy, are you scared? You better know it. But you needn't be, you know. Not if you have succeeded where I failed. What is Todd's answer now? You better ask Todd that. Todd? No. My answer is still no. What point in it to undergo agony only to give in finally? If one gives in. You think you won't? But you seem to forget. Todd's the one who has to give in. I don't have the formula. If, if there is one. Think now, Tammy, think. You're lying strapped to that slab. That slab beneath the pendulum. You cannot move. Scarcely a muscle moves. You're looking up, staring at that great blade, it begins to move back and forth, back and forth, swinging and coming lower with each swing. Suddenly, time has sped by unaccountably. Suddenly, there it is, the blade within inches of you now, within an inch, cutting now, cutting through your dress, delicately cutting. And now, now on the next swing, it is going to slap. Stop it! Stop it! Tammy, I can't let you do this. I didn't this. think that you could. Bring the tape recorder. Don't bother. No. Tammy. Todd, this man is a phony. I'll stake my life on it. You're trying to scare Todd into giving you the secret formula. But if your scare fizzles, I won't you... go through with this thing. I won't, hmm? Well, I... I don't think you will. In that case, finish your champagne and we'll proceed. One final chance. Mr. X, this is... It's senseless. It makes plenty of sense to me. It would if I were in your shoes. 
that woman, that lovely, exceptional woman you were lucky enough to marry, lies strapped to the slab. When I give the nod to our red-hooded executioner, he'll press the button that starts the pendulum. Once started, it can't be stopped. Can't be, no. It goes right on, down, and through. Should you change your mind, it had better not be at the last moment. It had better be in time for the executioner to pull her out from under the blade. Tammy! Don't give in, Todd. Don't. You leave me no choice. I must... Do it. Damn it. Damn you. Go on and do it. Very well. I give the nod. It's begun its swing. You see it, Tom? Back. And forth. Back. And forth. An inch lower with each swing. Here. That, that's the microphone to the tape recorder. Take it. Use it. Tell the formula. What is he saying to you? What, what is that he has handed you? A microphone? Yes. The mic of the tape recorder. Oh, Todd, don't. You'll die if I don't. Then I'll die. I'd rather die. Me than a whole world. I can't let you. I can't let you. If you can't let her speak. You've got the mic in your hand. Start talking. Uh, uh, no. What's left if I do? What's left? What? She loves me. If I let her down... If I save a life and lose a million others, she'll hate me. What'll be left to me, then? There are other women. You, healthy. There are no other women. There's only Tammy for me. Oh, my dearest, you are right. We, we've got to go through with this. For them. I've met fools in my time, but you... It's within inches, three at most, from her body. Not two. One. Cutting her dress now. You see? And the next cut. Talk, you fool. Talk fast. The bacterial equation. Oh, no. It's no. It's no. What is it? The equation before it's too late. What? What indeed? A man and a woman. Just another man and woman like you, like me, stand ready to sacrifice or not sacrifice their own lives for others. Certainly the woman does. The man? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when I return for Act Three. I have said that there are all sorts of torture, limitless degrees of mental and physical torment. And of these, mental anguish is worst of all. There are some who can stand physical pain better than mental, and vice versa. Moments ago, we wondered, would Todd Stearns break under the strain of watching the torment of his wife, Tammy? Would Tammy? Well, let's find out. Todd. Todd. What? You fainted. Fainted? Tammy. I remember now. Pendulum. Blade descending closer and closer, cutting through a dress. Is she... Is she what? Dead! Damn you, is she dead? The tape recorder is right there in front of you. Dictate the formula. Answer me. Is Tammy dead? Dictate the formula. No. You will, if you want the answer to whether your wife is dead or alive. Oh, no. If she's dead, then at least she's safe from you. Ah, but if she's alive. I see it in your eyes, the agony of not knowing. Dictate. No. You've got more guts than I thought. Oh, no. 
I'm as much a coward as the next man. But you made a mistake. When you left Tammy and me alone together for those few hours. Oh? That's a funny thing, but... I don't know why. Maybe it was just facing our last hours on Earth together, but we really got to know each other for the first time in our four years of marriage. I made a mistake? You made a mistake. You're licked. Dead or alive, Tammy licked you, and dead or alive, I won't let her down. I see. Excuse me. I'll bring her in. Tammy? Oh, Tammy, thank you. God, you're alive. Oh, darling, oh, darling. Are you all right? You aren't harmed. You're all right. No, I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. No, you're not. Your hands, I can feel your hands no, I, are shaking. No, I'll calm down, then I'll be all right. Not if Todd goes on refusing to give me that formula. Then you haven't given it to him? No. Oh, I'm so glad, darling. I'm so glad. Your happiness is doomed to a short life. <laughs> Because I assure you, Todd is going to do what I ask. No, not Todd. Oh, yes. Uh, let me say that I, I admire you, Todd. both of you. And you have every reason to be proud of this man you married. Well, I am very. But he is not a superman. He has his breaking point, as all men do. I haven't succeeded in reaching that point, that's all. But unless he dictates the formula he carries in his head, I shall take final steps to reach his breaking point and yours quickly. Oh, by the way... Uh, your little girl, Jill. What about her? I thought you'd want to know. Uh, your housekeeper, Anna, sent for the doctor a little while ago. Why? Is she worse? I don't know. All I have is the report that the doctor was sent for. You dirty rat. Now, slowly. Slowly, Todd. Physical violence will get you nowhere. This is part of your next torture, isn't it? Making us worry about Jill's condition. And what will become of her should the two of you meet what you possibly may meet? Death. You leave me no choice but to subject you now to the kind of torment I tried to avoid. Well, there can't be anything worse than the pendulum. There's the pit. I see that you know something about it. I don't know anything about it. Precisely. You've heard of the pit, but it remains an unknown quantity. And it will be that, the simple fact that you don't know what awaits you in the pit, that will break you. Just as not knowing why the doctor was called for your daughter has shaken you. Now, once again, will you give me the formula? Then it's the pit, I'm afraid. Back where we started? Oh, no. The pendulum, you see, is again in place in the ceiling. I will leave you alone now with just the pit. Oh, and, uh, Todd, when you decide that you can't take any more and agree to give me the formula, just say so. You'll be heard. Oh, I hope Jill's all right. Don't worry, she is. There's no better doctor than Dr. Lynch. Yes, but if the cold's gone into her chest, you know, her chest is weak. Don't worry, could... it's just what that louse wants. For all we know, he could be lying. Anna never sent for the doctor. Oh, you're right. I'm doing just what X wants me to do. I'm worrying myself sick. What are you looking for? Something to drop down the pit. Why, what for? Find out how deep it is. Whether the bottom is solid or filled with water. The room's as bare as a bone, though. Here. Oh, your shoe? <laughs> you can buy me another pair when we get out of here. <laughs> I'll buy you a dozen pair. Okay. Here it goes. Funny. I didn't hear a sound. Not a sound. No splash? No thud of the shoe hitting anything? Nothing? A damn thing can't be bottomless. It's either that or awfully, awfully deep. That's for sure. Give me your other shoe. Try again? Yes. The first sound could have been so slight we didn't pick it up. Yes. This time, listen carefully. Very carefully. Ready? Go ahead. I didn't hear a thing. Shh. No. Nothing. Let's stand back. I don't like being so near the edge. I don't blame you. Thought of falling in. No. Oh. Sorry. It's 
all right. I feel the same way. Let's sit down on the floor, against the wall. All right. Yes, that's better. Todd? Hmm? The wall feels warm. Hmm, it's a little too warm. Just, uh, move away a bit. Better? Much. Oh, I'm sure Jill's going to be all right. I'm just not going to worry about her. No. Todd, that wall's getting hotter. Well, we'll have to move away from it a little more. And closer to the pit. Wait a minute now. You don't think... Here, let me just see how... Todd! Burn my hand. The wall is as hot as an oven. Move over to that one. Well, this one's as hot as the other. It's getting hotter. So that's it. Don't you see? The hotter the walls get, the farther we have to get from them. And the closer to the pit... Until we... Yeah. Until. Are you all right? Oh, darling, it's so stifling. And I... We're... Moving closer to the pit. Can't help it. The heat from the walls. Getting worse. Oh, God, hold me. Put your arms around me. Sweetheart. I'm scared. What is down there? We go over the edge. Oh, God, it's less than two feet away now. When we go over, what will happen to us? What? Death, I guess. But how? How will we die? Wait. Try not to move any closer. Try. Help myself. The heat. Unbearable. You're moving closer to the edge, too. I can't help it either. Hold me. Hold me. Stop. Sweetheart. I, this is it. I guess we... Wait. Wait a minute. Heat. It doesn't seem so hot. Not so. I... I think you're right. It's cooler. Oh. The room seems cooler. Oh. Let's move back. It won't last long. That creep has got something else in store for us. But... You see? He didn't go through with it. No. Just as he didn't go through with the pendulum. No, you fainted. I, I don't think he would have gone through with it anyway. Why not, Todd? What? Mr. X, Todd. I can see you and hear you. What's given you the sudden idea that I won't go through with things? You want the formula? Kill me, and the formula dies with me. True. Well, Todd Stern's dead is worth considerable too. Oh, not as much as the formula, but considerable. I, I, I don't see why. Very simple. It's worth a great deal for a certain government to prevent another from getting the formula. Keeps the balance of power unbalanced, you see. And now that we've settled that, do you still refuse to change your mind? Yes. I'm sorry to say that this time I believe you. Wait a minute. Tammy has no part in this now. You used her to break me down. You failed. But your use for her is over. Let her go. He hasn't heard you. Or if he did, he said his final word. And I, I wouldn't want out anyhow. If you die, I want to be dead too. But it's senseless. Pointless. I'm the one who has the formula, not you. There's no point in killing you if I... What's that? What is it? Machinery of some kind. But I don't know what it's for. Yes, I do. God, what? The walls. Look at the walls. They're moving. inward. Making the room narrower. And narrower until... There'll be no space. 
no floor space left. Nothing but the pit. Oh, Lord. Oh. X. X, listen to me. Let Tammy go. I beg you, let her go. The pit. The walls pushing us to it. Oh, let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Tammy. I can't bear it anymore. I can't bear it. <laughs> Any more now, sweetheart. No more. Now. More champagne, Tammy? No. Todd? What I want is an explanation of all this, and you better make it a good one, mister. What is your name? X will do. Yeah, but now we know it was all up. A test or a game or whatever it was. I must still keep my cover. <laughs> Look, I don't blame you for being angry. Simply put, we subjected you to a test to see how much you could take before you broke down. All operatives, couriers, are put through the ringer. I never was before. I never even heard of it before. Never would have if you hadn't reached that point in your career where we felt that you were ready. The formula you so painstakingly memorized, Todd, is worthless. There's no such thing as that bacterial weapon. Oh, no. But if there were, and you were caught by the kind of group I pretended to represent, we had to be sure that you'd never break, never reveal it. And risk blowing my mind. Tammy. No, no, no. You were never in any danger of that. From start to finish, you were carefully monitored by staff psychiatrists. We'd have known instantly if you were in any serious difficulty. Well, I... Uh... I guess you'll have to do it. Yes, we do. Tell me something. What What did we fall on? I mean, when I went over, holding Tammy in my arms. <laughs> Special foam rubber. Dozens of layers of the stuff. You could have dropped an iron safe down that hole, much less Tammy's shoes, and you'd have heard nothing. Now then, it's over. You can relax and unwind. What's more, Todd? You have gained something that you didn't have before. You've learned how much you can take. And, mister, you can take it. I learned something a lot more important than that, if you ask me. What would that be, Todd? I learned... Tammy, I always thought you were pretty wonderful, but... You're more than that. You're the most wonderful woman... and wife... in the world. Truth is stranger than fiction. And if you feel the story I've just brought you is one of the strangest you've ever heard, I can only assure you that even stranger things go on in this world of ours. Stranger and, yes, more terrifying. Let's hope you never find yourself involved with any of them. Beyond your radio, that is. I'll be back shortly. version of The Pit and the Pendulum was only based on Edgar Allan Poe's story, it's to this great master of the bizarre and this connoisseur of the horrifying that we owe the stories, shall we say, electrifying moments. I hope you were properly shocked. Our cast included Tony Roberts, Marion Seldes, and Norman Rose. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.